Oh, there, we just had to have a little a little moment there to catch our breath and uh, just have a little rest in between. We hope you enjoyed that little uh, this, advertisement break. Were the advertisements good? On schedule nap time. Yeah, we just had a little nap. We had to go for a little nap. Everyone's fine. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's all falling apart tonight, Russ. It's all falling <laughs> apart. Hi, everybody. It's false alarm. But yeah. I, we, don't, we don't know why yeah. it went off. I was just thinking that when that went off, I was like, hmm. I don't, remember. I don't remember making that sound effect. <laughs> so you had the opportunity you know, to make that joke at the time, and you I didn't did, make it. I did. I didn't make it. I thought of it out in the parking lot, and, and then, then I, I brought it in here and sh shamelessly said it <laughs> out loud. <laughs> okay. Hi, Welcome back. So uh, before the break, uh, and of course, don't worry. The correct safety procedures were followed entirely. Uh, our security guard and our fire warden uh, went round and made sure everything was okay, but apparently it was a false alarm, so hopefully that won't happen again. Uh, Ross here was beforehand talking about the build-up, funnily enough. It went... And then the fire and then alarm, the fire alarm went off, yeah. Um, so, so where were we? Do you want to play that one more time? Uh, yeah, or, so or I was... Actually, I was well. <laughs> let's not tempt fate. So this is where we were. Sorry about this little build-up sound. An alarm in itself. So... Funnily enough, it, it does actually solve... Nothing happens, great. It does serve dual purpose in a way. It it helps build up tension, you know, you know something something big is coming. But also like within the kind of fiction and the lore of elite, we always think about in terms of why is this sound playing? You know, why is your ship giving you this information? For, well, in this case, I'm thinking, well, it's it's your ship warning you that there's gonna be a detonation and you know, don't be too close, you know, get back to a safe distance, you know? So it all kind of ties together. Um, yeah, I'll move on. <laughs> that's good. It's, it's, yeah. That's all very important. Don't we won't we won't be shortchanging anybody. We're going to carry on with exactly how else planned. Just fifteen minutes later than usual. Yeah, that's that's good. So where do we go from there? So, as I said earlier, kind of taking taking inspiration from from actual quarry blasts and mining itself. I knew that I want wanted there to, I wanted there to be like. Um, preceding explosions, you know, and in this case it's it's the explosions of the, the seismic charges going off. Um, and that for me is like, it kind of, it's almost like a, it's almost like a, a, kind of like a slight letdown before the big explosion. So these ones are kind of slightly muffled, um, quite percussive. Hmm. Um, I'll show the video as well with this. Let me just... So you'll notice here that it's not in sync at all. At this stage, what I'm doing is I'm I'm track laying, but I'm not sticking rigidly to the video either because I know that all of this is subject to change. The timings have yet to be worked out. What I'm essentially trying to do is just you know get the general idea and and make the sequence sound good, mm -hmm. you know, before we can go put it in the game and then make it all sync up nicely. Mm -hmm. um, so in this case. Let me just solo these. So I've got these initial detonations. So these are just stock explosion sounds. Now there's nothing too interesting, but in context, what does it help set the scene? So there, for me, that, that's the sound of the, the charges going off. Um, and they're just simple layers of maybe two explosions. Moving on, I've got a sweetener layer in this. So this is debris. So I know that there's going to be, I know that the VX, if the VFX team are going to do their magic and there's going to be lots of rocks and kind of debris splaying out from it. So you can hear that there. So this is some kind of dirt, dirt trickle. trickling and sand, fine particulate. You know, so it all adds, it all like, and what I, what I try to think of here is in terms of frequency ranges. So you've got your low frequencies, your mid frequencies, and your high frequencies. Um, and because this is such a, a big moment and it's kind of a big set piece, I know that the the whole game is for, for just this moment gonna be mixed around this. So that I can be I can be quite broadband in my frequency usage. So I try to have the whole, you know, the whole spectrum. So I'll have big deep lows kind of mid-range mm -hmm. for giving you that presence and the higher details as well. So this this is an example of kind of the, the higher end detail that you hear. And all put together it kind of it gives you this really rich experience. 
So that's debris. Uh, yeah, certainly. As so I say, it's it's interesting how the small, tiny elements just so many layers on top of one another. Yeah, and yeah, and it's the, like you can fall into the trap of adding too much as well, and you kind of need to know when to pare it back, and mm -hmm. that's that is the tricky thing, um, and that's that's what you know that's what mixing is all about, really. It's it's knowing what what's adding and what's actually subtracting. And often what you'll do is, in, in a context like this, you'll play it and maybe you'll, so, you'll mute something as you play it and then you'll unmute it. And if, it kind of, if you feel like it's adding to it, you can keep it. Or if you feel like it's subtracting in some way or if it's just distracting or keeping, taking up too much of the frequency spectrum, often you don't need it or you will need to go in and, and modify it in such a way that it starts um, to fit. That it starts, it starts that's to a, fit. That's a good and hot it's, audio tip there. I think. Yeah, and it's often about like almost kind of like making things mesh together mm. in, in a way that they're, they're not they're not you know trotting on so each other. Complement one another rather yeah. than and, and sort of complete each other. Complement one another rather than yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So okay, let's let's move on to the actual. I tell you what, what we'll do is let's listen to the rupture sound. So. I knew that there was going to be three different types of, well, there's three different types of asteroid we have in the game. There's the, the rocky, or dusty asteroids, and you've got the icy ones and the metallic ones. So I know that I'm going to have to do a whole sound set for each of those. So I started off with the rocky ones. Um, and these are made up of, once again, a whole bunch of different layers. Uh, what I've got, I've got explosions. There's the quarry sound. Quarry yeah. rock detonation. I've got some sand pouring as well, which adds kind of a higher end detail. Once again, going back to that kind of full use of the frequency spectrum. So here's just the distant quarry sound. So that's really nice. And what I've done here is you can see I've taken the attack off it. So this was probably so this is probably a detonation, but just by fading out like taking the the attack off of that, I've got like this really nice tail that gives it gives us this kind of you know, a kind of a an aftermath that, that, that mm. goes on for longer, mm -hmm. and that's really mm -hmm. interesting. So, and they've got this sand pouring sound, and that for me is like describing the the kind of higher end dust elements. So it's just the sound of like sand pouring, probably out of a bucket or something, <laughs> you know. And it's like you think you think about it, and you go like, well, that's that doesn't, how would that work in in this context? But once again, I'm not thinking about is this sound indicative of, of an asteroid exploding, because of course you couldn't record that. So you need to think like, what are the, what are the, frequency, the frequencies that I want in here? Mm -hmm. And what are the types of sounds? And sometimes you find yourself needing to go to strange places to get that. So for, I think for added texture in this, I'm gonna skip ahead. There's lots of rock debris and stuff in here, but this, this is a tree falling sound. So I've like pitched down the sound of a, a tree falling over or being felled, you know? and. And that's the thing, and you can see it reacting as well. That's that cracking sound. Yeah, and it gives it really, really interesting textural sounds that are not just, you know, it's not just one kind of long. Because a tree falling has a, has a has a crack to it, doesn't it? Because it cracks the the yeah comes yeah. apart in a certain type of way, and so it really does feel like tearing. It almost. feels tearing, and you mm. can you just get this idea of rupture in your head, mm. and that in combination with things like this is just this is just a big rockfall sound, big deep rockfall. Oh, don't crash. Well, funnily enough, um, does, uh, Daniel Hyde says, do they know that sound doesn't travel in a vacuum? Well, of course, we have an in-law reason as to why you are uh, hearing these things, and that is because, um, of course, it's to stop space madness, isn't it? It's yeah. to stop... Don't worry, I can, I can go back to the... Uh, yeah, do you want to go back to the Sorry. thing and I'll, I'll boot build. this up again? Hot build. It's not the worst thing that's happened to Nice Nice Dream, though, is it? Sure, can I open up this again? <laughs> I think you can, hopefully. It's not on screen, right? Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um... Yeah, sorry about that. I don't know. Reaper just crashed for some reason. Top build. Do you have that day to day? Yeah, <laughs> this is this is game development, <laughs> dealing with applications that crash. Um, yeah. So as I was saying, it's 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 about finding the the kind of sounds that you know convey the feelings that you want you want to you know have players feel. The, well, the the in law explanation, of course, is that to stop space madness. So they have like, and also to, to oh, yeah. warn people for, for things that like this okay, well, computer. We, okay, well, okay, so we were talking about the no sound in space thing there. Yeah. Okay, well, there's an interesting thing with that. So as part of this kind of exploratory, you know, process, like I thought to myself, wouldn't it be cool if, so within the within the elite lore, you're 
your ship basically for the purposes of, of safety and being able to kind of position yourself in, in, this, in this environment, recreates the sounds that, you, that are outside the ship as if there was an atmosphere. Okay? So that's, that's kind of the rule set that we, we have for doing, implementing a lot of the sound in the game. Um, and you'll see that when, when your cockpit blows out. Um, when the yeah when basically the the, the canopy blows out, uh, all of the external ships should be muted. You won't hear them, but you'll only hear the sounds from in inside your ships. So you'll hear the, the resonance of the of the weapons, for instance. You know, and you hear your breathing. So that's that's something that we we kind of we use that as our, our checklist. You know, that's, that's that's kind of a rule that we we employ. So. Sorry, let me just get back to where I was here. That's okay, take your time. Um, one of the things I thought was, okay, wouldn't it be cool if this explosion was so massive that it, it managed, it did something and it, it took out that system for a while and it was actually, it was actually silent. Mm. You know, the explosion would be silent and then maybe you would hear it all in one big bang when the shockwave hit you. And I did explore that and I actually implemented that as a, as a kind of a, an idea um, and I had this this kind of crazy kind of glitchy sound that so comes in here. Are you ready to? Try? Yeah, yeah. So, mm. yeah. So I had this kind of idea that maybe it could, could be like this glitch and almost like this tinnitus type sound that comes in, and, and then, then bam. and then a bam when the shock wave mm. hits you. Mm. I like I implemented that, and we all we kind of looked at it and went, okay, it was a good idea, but you know maybe it's a bit too indulgent. And the other thing about that is that it actually. For me, it, it detracted from the amazing, like work that the the artists had done, you know, and the VFX team had done in in all of this, all of this kind of mm. debris scattering mm. and the, the shock wave, and it was like we were like, if we if we did that, it would be a bit crazy, but it would, it just didn't really mesh with the rest of the game. It would have been us kind of going off out on our own. So we we need to kind of think sympathetically, you know, and. What we're doing is is serving the game and not just going implementing crazy ideas for the, <laughs> for the sake of it, even though that was something that we explored. Mm. You know, so it's all part of the 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 kind of creative process. Is that um, our head of audio, Jim Croft, is is very much in favor of daring to fail. It's something that he says all the time. And I think that's probably what what makes us you know such a kind of a, a good team and there's such a you know, we're we're allowed to try out different things, you know, and often things don't work out and you just have to accept it and move on. And generally you'll find that you'll only get better from doing that. Mm -hmm. You know? Um yeah. So moving on. Let's get to right. let's get to the, the kind of main events. So as a sound designer, one of the things you're always thinking about is like how do I make this how do I make this my own? How do I make this unique? How is this going to be like a signature sound? Um, the guy we call the kind of godfather of modern sound design, a guy called Ben Burt. And he's done most of the Star Wars films, Indiana Jones, he's done Wall-E. He is like our god. <laughs> and he's an amazing guy and he's, he kind of pioneered a lot of, a lot of methods that we still use today. Um, so his approach is all about like creating, you know, super characterful sounds you know something that you can you can identify a sound as oh yeah that's the that's the asteroid explosion sound from Elite Dangerous mm -hmm. and that's what we we're trying to achieve and and in certain, I think we've achieved that in other places in this game with like the sound of ships boosting or with the sound of jumping to hyperspace you know they're all real signature Discovery's moments gonna you know and, and they are kind of our benchmarks in many ways and it's like oh we need to have something that gives gives players the same feeling of familiarity as this so that's something that we try to achieve, and we, once again, try out a lot of ideas, often fail, and then we settle on something. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You deserve a well-deserved drink. So, <laughs> I was talking about Attack of the Clones earlier, and... That's the same guy you were referring to, he yeah, did that. Yeah, he did this sound, and one of the things I shamelessly did is like, I was like, okay, wouldn't it be cool if it sounded like it? Let's mm -hmm. not get sued, but you know, it was, just, <laughs> it was such a cool moment. I know I was going against what, exactly everything I've said here, but you know, I was like, okay, can I recreate the sound almost as like an exercise? So I, I start. It was one of my first iterations, and everybody's like, "Wow, that's amazing!" 
So I had this like this sound going through. <laughs> exactly, exactly that. I can imagine yeah. Joe Hogan being like that. Yeah. So I had this. I'm using absinthe here, and I'm using um, a resonator, and it's just it's such a it's almost like a cheap trick, I think. But it's it's this delay that has a like very high rate of feedback, mm -hmm. but a very short time. And you get this real kind of prolonged slapback thing, and it's almost like it's like a resonant tube. Get ready for this. Oh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's right. pretty cool. You know, and we had that in there as a kind of a characterful sound at the start, and we were looking and going, "Yeah, no, okay, we got to, we got to take that out. Let's not get sued." <laughs> but it was fun nonetheless, you know. And we then I tried different kind of iterations on this kind of. Playing around with that idea, seeing if I can, if I can, I can, you know, change this enough to make it unique. You know, kind of these fil like really kind of sharp filter sweeps and things like that. You know, that give you this sense of almost, you know, just this massive entity just cracking apart. You mm -hmm. know, and getting that kind of percussive nature in there was something that I, I was kind of struggling with. You know, because it's um, you need you need. You need to convey the sound of the, the rocks breaking apart, but also you need that kind of initial crack, you know, because we knew that there was going to be there's going to be this flash, you know, mm -hmm. and we wanted to sync to that point. So there's a couple of failed attempts here, and you know, some of them. That one's pretty cool, but once again, the other thing about it is what came up is that this this direction sounds too much like uh, some kind of a sci-fi energy source mm -hmm. thing. And we wanted this to be much more kind of rootsy, just good old fashioned TNT blowing this thing apart, mm -hmm. right? And I kind of approached that later on. So the the way I'm thinking of it is like, okay, these seismic charges, you plant them and you plant them into fissures and they're injecting like explosive material into mm. the the fissures and then they pop, pop, pop and ignite the 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 explosive material that they've they've injected, and then that's when you hear the boom, mm. and that's you know that's what I settled on in my own mind to explain it to myself, you know, and that's often how you inform your your kind yeah, of about the story. Your direction. Yeah, it's mm. all about the story. So what we did settle on then was let me just mute those failed attempts. Um, this sound here. <laughs> so this is. So it doesn't sound as impressive, but it's kind of made up of a couple of different layers. So we're getting back into how what it actually became at this point. Yeah, so this was like, what I wanted is, because it's difficult to kind of imbue a lot of character in, in like a super short percussive sound, I wanted something that kind of stretched out and gave you the sense of like the, the, the kind of impact that this sound has on its environment, you know, almost like a, this is almost indicative of like a, a jet plane taking off and that kind of phasy nature. I did this using something called a granular synthesizer, so it takes little splices of a sample. I can play them back in various different ways. Uh, and in this case, what I'm doing is I'm playing many versions of the sample. I'm tracking through a sample, so I think it was like a whoosh sound mm. uh, that I'm kind of tracking through, and it kind of it it gives you this kind of almost stretched, phasey kind of sound. I think it's it's pretty cool. Mm. This is in addition to a couple of other layers. So there's like an explosion layer here. So that's just more kind of reinforcement. This is an explosion, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's big rumbles here as well. This is like uh, thunder sounds. And I've got kind of a percussion part. So this is oh no. just another crack, you know, to reinforce that it's, it's initial it's percussion. It's certainly waking thing. me up, Ross. Yeah, it really is. I, I drove my colleagues wild with this because, <laughs> like, if all they heard from my room was just like boom, boom, boom all the time, you know, for about again. two weeks. <laughs> this, this is just a kick drum. That's just a kick drum sound. But it gives that percussive intro. Yeah, it gives you the, that that crack, mm. you know, is that moment. Yeah. And we send something like that to the sub as well. So if you if you're lucky enough to be listening on seven point one or or five point one, you'll get that kind of thud, mm. you know. Uh, then we've got like a, you know, sub drop because yeah, you got you know, sub drop. union rules. We need to, you know, <laughs> we, have to we have to do that. You have to be legally obliged. We're to legally do obliged so. to, you know. There's, sub drop there's a guy that comes back, come by with, he comes by with a clipboard, <laughs> and you know, we don't have a sub drop in there. It's, you know, yeah, you get penalty, you get you know, penalty, pay a fine. Mm. So like that's this is this is my entire sweetener layer for for the explosion. <laughs> there it is. 
and then that in context, let's play the lot, right? Let's just let's just play the lot because this is me individually soloing each element, but it's all part of the bro broader yeah. picture, mm -hmm. and it's all of these layers that make up the the full sound. So let me get the video back up again because okay, that's useful. Let's put it there. Do that thing. And so uh, from the top, let's just go from the top of the. This Detonation in ten seconds. some aftermath sounds there as well that kind of stretch on for a little bit longer to describe the the kind of slowly kind of almost creaking kind of chunks of asteroid you know and that actually loops Detonation. around oops that loops for quite a while so this is this is me this i'm still just track laying to individual just one one video here nothing is in the game yet this is me just working in, in reaper Almost as if I was doing a movie or post-production, right? Something before we move on, um, that, uh, and I hope I'm not jumping into it, no, it's just okay. that you told me something really interesting early on. As you noticed, it is out of sync with yeah, the video. Yeah, it's out of sync. But, the, but it, 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 your sound design then influenced the way that they changed the VFX, am I, am I right? Yeah, or, so... Or somewhat towards it. Because we got in earlier here, it kind of allowed us to, um, I guess, yeah, somewhat influence the, the timing of, of how this would work. So as you see here, the, the, the model swaps out and it's not really in sync with the, the flash. What I'm essentially doing here is like, this is kind of what I want it to sound like. And at a certain point, I'm ignoring the video, as I said. Um, and what we did then is I, I basically bounced this out into just a, a video and take it to the rest of the team. And we all kind of looked at it and, and went, OK, well, that's cool. That, that could work, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I work with gameplay, VFX team, you know, and we kind of, we, there was a lot of iteration, a lot of back and forth mm. here. Um, and between me and the VFX team, we kind of tweaked the timings so that everything just really like, I sat together the first really time nicely. I, I heard it, I was, I came to your room and uh, you were there with Dave Cross and you were both yeah. just watching and reviewing it. And yeah, yeah. He was uh, responsible for some of those effects that you see. Yeah, that's it, because we knew that, okay, this, there's going to be a, like a big flash here and we, like, we we settle on that. Okay, let's sync that with this massive boom. That's mm. like that's where we want the whole thing to rupture apart. And you know, it's still it like we're doing. It's it's a game, right? So mm. there's a lot of smoke and mirrors happening here. Um, and we that's the moment the kind of model swap happens as well. I'm sorry mm. to ruin it for people, but you know that's what that's when it kind of does that. You know, it fractures. It breaks you know? apart. So it's all real. It's all it's all kind of serving the greater purpose. You know, it, it helps. It helps the game. You know? mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what we, that's what kind of we settled on. Now it didn't. Great. There was there was a lot of mixing after this, a lot of kind of rejigging things and just making sure everything is everything is dandy. Um, sorry, let me take another glass of water. So while you're doing that, what's the sort of process like in terms of how how long it'll take you? You'll go you'll go with these sounds that you've made up. Have you made the complete sound? Then you take it to. Uh, Joe, who's your lead in this case, mm. or would you yeah. um, do elements of it and take them to him? Or, or? No, well, it's it's good to to get a first pass in before anybody can look at it because mm -hmm. sometimes you'll have an idea in your head and you don't want to be like explaining, you don't want to be making excuses for it. Mm -hmm. You kind of want it to be in a in a more fully realized state before you get people into critique it <laughs> because yeah. often they go. They'll go, oh, but it doesn't have this, and you say, oh no, oh, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, yeah, like I'm planning that, I'm going yeah. to do that. You know, so it's, yeah, at a certain stage, when I went for my first in-game implementation, I you know, get people into review it, and mm -hmm. then we start playing around with ideas, um, and you know, feedback. Our QA team as well, Robin McGovern, is like he's, we call him eagle-eared Robin. Oh yeah. You know, he's just he's got such There's a great an pair of, of why, ears. Uh, why he will pick out the most minuscule audio. Oh really? Uh, yeah, glitches and, and irregularities, huh. and draw your attention to them. And you can go, oh, I didn't even I didn't I know that was a thing. I never heard huh? that. Oh. But he's yeah he's such a valuable source of feedback, and he's the he's a guy who will like stress test it and play it. Nice. Um, and yeah, we, we take on board like a lot of feedback from a lot of different people. 
So following on from this, as I said, this is just linear. How do we put it in the game? So what I do is essentially I just export all of these sounds. You'll see all these things, they're, they're called regions. Uh, and I'm basically just splicing up what I've created here and exporting them as individual assets. So all of these little markers here are individual assets that I'm exporting from this session. Um, and with the end goal here of putting these assets into the game, and how we do that is with a piece of software called Audio Kinetic Wise. So let's bring up the slide. Okay, so Audio Kinetic Wise is what we call middleware. And essentially, it's, it's this piece of software that sits between the game engine and the audio hardware. Okay, and what it does is it allows us to, to essentially author the sounds and, 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 and allows us real time mixing functionality and we can basically manipulate the sounds in the 3D environment, okay? It's just funny because people in the chat have been saying stuff like, Ed, uh, Ed, you look lost, are you lost? No, this is the point where I go, huh? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So okay. this is the kind of bit where you work with the coders? Yeah, so... Somewhat. So, <laughs> if Sorry. I have to explain this now, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> explain it wrong, but All yes. Right, yeah, roughly. I'll, I'll, so our coders work in the code base, of course, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. And what WISE does is it, it, it basically accept these, accepts these calls from code that we call events, okay? Right. And when an event comes through, the event can be just, say, explosion, right? That gets called from code. WISE is listening out for a WISE that event call. called explosion. Mm. And what WISE does is say, the explosion event came through. And within WISE, you point that event, you can point it to a couple of different things, but you point that event to basically a, a sound asset that's an explosion. Yeah. Now, what's nice about WISE is that it can handle quite complex behaviors of sound assets. So it's not, it's not always just playing one sound asset. Uh, you can play containers of random sound assets. So that's something we, all, we always talk about variation in sounds. You, know, you don't want to play the same sound effect again and again and again and again because it just gets a bit boring. It gets a bit mm -hmm. grating, people get you know, fatigued by it. So we'll have these containers full of random variations of the same sound to give you the, all of this kind of, you know, make it more realistic, right? You can sequence them so you can have um, containers that play a sequence of events. You can have uh, containers that blend certain events and you can have what we call real-time parameter controls, which is essentially we're just taking a, it could be a, a floater, a float mm -hmm. essentially, or just a, mm -hmm. a variable and we're applying that to a sound so we can affect pitch or we can affect filtering. We can affect, you name it, you know, there's a, so much flexibility with us and it allows us to do so much. So that's the reason we use WISE because it offers us not only the flexibility but also such a, a streamlined workflow that we can get sounds in the game really quickly mm. and not have to worry about digging around in code a lot of the time even though our programmers do so much work with the actual back-end system approaches. So I think I pretty much covered that. Great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we'll go into WISE and just we'll, we'll just investigate a little bit as to you know how this looks. So this is WISE. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's quite a gray. It is a gray. Slightly, it gray, it's not really it? an aesthetically it's pleasing. Got, it's, got, it's got no themes means. that you can change. In the newer version, yeah. Oh, We're in a gosh. slightly older version oh, for this. Yeah. But um, yeah, so essentially these are the events on the right hand side and these are my assets. So th mm -hmm. this is what I've exported from, from my, my Reaper session, okay? So you'll see here there's this is aftermath the ice. Mm -hmm. there's, these are my sweeteners, so there's the ice breaking apart. So they were the, the kind of the sound of the rupture itself. This is the, that's the signature sound that we have. That's that. Warn us if you're going to do that, all right? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm joking. It's great. <laughs> yeah. all right. Don't spill your tea. Okay. Um, there's a, here's a, this is an LFE. So this is like, this is a kick that we send to um, a subwoofer. If you have one, have one. And then I've got another transient here. And that, I've kind of, I've, I have that so that I can control the level of crack. Mm in it, you know, so I can, I've got independent volume control over that. 
And essentially, what I'll do is, the great thing about WISE, my ears, sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, the great thing about WISE is you can connect to the game and do all of this in real time, so you can tweak and mix mm. as you go. So let's, let's do that right now. Okay, so let's, uh, I've got one instance of the game running here. Okay. Okay. Darkness. <laughs> is it because you're, you're still in the dust cloud from before? Okay. I believe. Let, do you want me? I'll do some. I'm going to do some debug stuff. Okay. Is it okay? We show that. Uh, we could just go back to the yeah, intro just in case. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. <laughs> I hope it's been uh, enlightening. I find it fascinating. If you have found it fascinating, please do let us know in the chat. And also, I'll, I'll, I'll say this again at the end. Um, I believe we're coming to a close shortly, but not yeah, a little we, bit left we, yet. We're finished. Um, uh, not that we want to get rid of you, of course. It's been really, genuinely, really interesting. Um, but if you want to see more stuff like this, and if you do, if you do really enjoy it, it really is important. Just like any other bit of feedback that we receive on uh, uh, for on the forums, Elite Dangerous, do let us know. So go to the forum threads and 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 let us know that you really enjoyed seeing this, and let us know on social media, and all those things. Please do, please let us know. Forums, social media, let us know in the chat as well. Because um, I enjoy doing these sorts of things. Yeah, uh, I've really and, enjoyed talking. Um, it's, yeah. it's been it's been good. It's, it's not often I get a chance oh, to talk that's... about my work. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm just glad anybody would listen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I think we're ready to go. Okay, yeah. so what do we want? We want. Um... So I'll talk a bit about. I'll talk a bit about essentially how these these sounds get placed in the 3D environment. So. What we have is we've got these things called emitters. Um, and you can think of an emitter just like, essentially like a speaker that you place somewhere in the game environment. And you can attach it to an object. You can have it floating randomly in space. Uh, in this case, what I'm going to demonstrate is we attach an emitter to the front of the shock wave. Mm -hmm. OK? Um, and you'll see this when I demonstrate. It'll be this debug kind of wireframe sphere that you'll see coming towards you when I explode. Well, yeah, so we're going to see this. We're going to see this. Oh, but this before, is real behind the scenes trickery. Before we see it, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to solo the shockwave sound. So you'll just hear the shockwave, mm. you know. And this gives you an idea how this works in context. Um, so I'm going to play this. You know, this is, this is what the shockwave, the sound of the shockwave moving sounds like, OK? okay. So that's it. It's a loop. It's essentially a loop. A so it's seamless. Sound, It'll just keep constantly. going again. It's about, I think it's, you know, it's three seconds long. It's a three second long loop. But this, the, the sound is so short lived that you never get, you never get a sense that it's a loop. So this is just a way we cut down on the, on the amount of memory usage. Um, we try to keep everything as trim as possible. Right? Um, so this loop sound will whoosh by you. You'll get the sense of it whooshing by you. And the reason we do that, the reason, how that works, <laughs> sorry. It's all right. How that works is we basically have this thing called an attenuation. And attenuation is essentially how the volume of the sound falls off over distance. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this graph here re represents distance, and this is the volume. Okay, zero dB being like full scale, essentially. That's as, for all intents and purposes, that's as loud as you can get, right? Um, and this is how the 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 sound will, will drop off in volume over the dis distance, OK? Mm -hmm. And we're doing things like we're doing a little bit of low pass filtering as well. So you'll hear more high frequencies when it's closer to you, and you'll <laughs> hear less when it's further away. The effect of which is that when you place that on an object that's, whoosh that's going by you, you'll get this kind of whoosh sound, OK? So let's demonstrate that. So I've soloed the shockwave sound. And now I'm going to explode the asteroid. <laughs> You're really getting it now. <laughs> Destroy. <laughs> you can give me some sort of code. It's not nearest, nearest. mother load. <laughs> One. Okay. Cool. Ah, you hear that? Yes. So that you sound is playing constantly, and it's only when it hits you that you, that your game picks it up, essentially. Or why is then talks yeah, to the Yeah. Well, code. you can hear it coming towards you because it, there's a fall off of about like 600. In this case, our units are meters, so okay. from 600 meters away, you'll hear it, and it'll it'll gradually go up in volume. So it's like I can I can I can preview it here offline. 
So this is at 600. So that's, that's essentially what's happening. OK, yeah. And it gives you this sense of. Essentially, that's what's happening with us, yeah. It's actually, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, how do you do and that's it? only yeah. just a small example of how, yeah. how, how this, kind of, this kind of thing works. But th it's all, it all ties together, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, amazing. Oops. <laughs> now you're just going to listen to that noise for the next <laughs> half an hour. Yeah, um, that, that's basically it. That's it? You know, there, there are other parts of this. There are weapons, of course. It all feeds into the, to the one um, feature so that is mining. So happening. If you think about, well, we're, okay, well, I know we're talking about mining specifically right now, but if you're talking about, like, combat, it's got to do the sound that it makes when the gun fires, yeah. the sound when you're being hit, the reacting and, to... And every one of those sounds that gets played is like an event or basically a trigger that comes from, through from code mm -hmm. to WISE plays the, the sound, mm -hmm. and then we can, WISE is good because it allows us to debug a lot as well, so we can see in a big log all the events that are coming through and we can optimize as much as possible. You know, so it's, it's a powerful tool um, and it allows us to make great games. Sorry, I missed a slide. It's yeah. Right. So that kind of basically sums it up, really. The, the final steps for us to take it through to completion our extensive QA testing. So between like me who worked on, on this feature, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to stress test it myself. Robin McGovern was our other QA audio um, whiz kid. Did the same, you know, we're, we're constantly trying to break it. Um, and like there were things that were unforeseen. There was like, because this is a, we're building on existing features, there were, there were issues with the, the limpets that had, because their behavior is different, so we needed to kind of reassess the way we do things with that. You know, we, you just do your best to iron everything out and, and, and try to fix everything, you know? Um, and of course, the, the beta testers as well, you know, who do such a good job, and they'll, they'll point out, you know, little, little things here and there, so we, we, we're always on the, on the forums looking for stuff coming through from them. And then it's just mixed tweaks, and, you know, at a certain point, you just have to kind of you kind of have to abandon it. You can't go any further, you know. And you just have to say, okay, I'm like going to stop tweaking. Like I'm going to stop tweaking well, things yeah. now. This is this is it. And know? of course, going back to that first slide, time constraints as well. Sometimes it's like yeah, we have course, to discuss yeah. now. This is now ready. But I think this is this is one feature that I think well, I was certainly really happy with how it turned out. And then seeing the reaction from from well, the players just about to say, has just really think? made my day. You know, yeah. it's just it's it's been so good to see mm -hmm. players get their hands on this. Mm -hmm. And and you know really really enjoy enjoy mining and this experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm really I feel so humbled and and you know just really really good to have been able to play a part in doing that. Well, there you go. And you should let Ross know in the chat as well uh, for the, all of the audio team, or everybody. Yeah. As we've covered There's tonight, the, the coders, the programmers, the uh, the audio designers, such as Ross uh, and Joe, and this, uh, we would list everybody, but it would take too long. Uh, you've got uh, a great direction as well from our uh, head, J uh, Jim Croft. Yeah. Uh, QA testers. There's just there's a there's a lot that goes into. Yeah, a big uh, shout out to Paolo yeah. Velasquez and Jordan Petter as well for their amazing work on the on the team as well. So yes, uh, make sure you please do uh, a lovely shout out. To, yeah. uh, and, and, Thanks, and put some rounds of applause in there. Yeah, absolutely awesome. And Ross, thank you so much for. No, I think you're we very take this off now. Oh, it's very strange you take this off. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a but, different experience. This is oh, very weird. <laughs> um, but thank you, everybody, as well. So uh, this was uh, episode three of uh, Discovery Scanner, which, of course, is a series that goes in deep into depth all about some of the features, or very specific features, uh, about Elite Design Dangerous, and hopefully sort of teaches you a few things about uh, game design, but also gives you a sort of different perspective on, on the work that goes into creating uh, the, the game that you guys play so very often. And again, thank you so much for carrying on playing and being here part of this journey. If you want to see more stuff like this, again, like I said, please do let us know on social media, uh, let us know uh, on the forums, uh, because we want to hear the kind of stuff that you're enjoying, see if we want to do more like it in future. So Ross, will you come back again at some point, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. I'd okay. be happy to. Thank Wonderful. you, everybody. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, well, hopefully we'll be back soon with another episode. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.